Hey guys, welcome back to Synapse. This is Ruthika and today we'll talk about peptic ulcer disease. Well, this is basically because of imbalance in the mucosal defense and damaging forces. It can occur anywhere in the GID which is exposed to acid. But it is more common in duodenum and stomach. It is four times more common in duodenum than in stomach. So now that necessitates us to differentiate between duodenal ulcers and gastric ulcers. Duodenal ulcer is commonly seen in the first part of the duodenum, while gastric ulcer is seen at the junction of the body and the antrum, more commonly on the lesser curvature. Duodenal ulcer is very strongly associated with H. pylori infection. Well, gastric ulcer too is associated with H. pylori infection, but it is more strongly associated with NSAID use and smoking. In duodenal ulcer, we see that there is increased acid production, which is the main pathology, while in gastric ulcer, the acid production is normal, but the pathology lies in reduced defense mechanism of the mucosa, because of which the mucosa is overly sensitive to the normal amount of acid which is present. Next, talking about the most common clinical feature of the peptic ulcer disease, that is the epigastric pain, in duodenal ulcers we see that the pain decreases following intake of meals. This is because the food intake stimulates the alkaline intestinal secretions and this alkaline secretion has soothing effect on the ulcers. Well, this may mean that the patient might consume food more frequently, which may lead to weight gain. The food also stimulates acidic peptic secretions, which increases the pain of gastric ulcers. Well, this might mean that the patient might avoid consumption of food, which may lead to weight loss over time. Let's here know the complications of peptic ulcer disease. The most common complication is bleeding. In case of duodenal ulcers, the most common artery which is involved is gastroduodenal artery, and this may present as melina. In the case of gastric ulcer, the most common artery involved is left gastric artery and this may present as hematemesis. The next serious complication of peptic ulcer disease is perforation. The perforation of the duodenum is normally seen on the anterior wall and this may lead to escape of the acid from the anterior wall of the duodenum onto the pancreas or into the peritoneum which leads to pancreatitis and peritonitis respectively. And this is a major cause of mortality in the case of peptic ulcer disease. Malignancy is another complication of peptic ulcer disease. Duodenal ulcers never turn malignant, it is always benign. But gastric ulcers may have a probability of progressing to a malignancy. How do we diagnose peptic ulcer disease? One of the methods is urea breath test, which is a completely non-invasive and a very easy test to perform. In this, the patient is given a solution of radiolabeled urea in water. And the person's breath is tested for radiolabeled carbon dioxide exhalation. If radiolabeled carbon dioxide is present in the person's exhaled air, then that means that the person has H. pylori infection. Well, how's that? H. pylori bacteria produces an enzyme called urease, which breaks the urea to the carbon dioxide, and thus the radiolabeled urea is broken to radiolabeled carbon dioxide. The other methods of diagnosis are endoscopy and biopsy, which is the best and the most accurate method. And next we have the CLO test, where CLO stands for Campylobacter like organism. In this, what we do is in a jar, we have urea and phenol red. The biopsy tissue is added into this. If the biopsy tissue contains H. pylori bacteria, then the urease from the biopsy tissue is released into the solution, which breaks the urea into ammonia. So there is ammonia formation, which changes the pH of the solution and this is indicated by the solution turning red because of the presence of phenol red, which is an indicator. Talking about the treatment of peptic ulcer disease, we have the triple drug therapy, where one proton pump inhibitor is combined with two antibiotics against H. pylori bacteria. 
This is all about peptic ulcer disease. I really hope this helped you. And if it did, give me a big thumbs up and do share this with your friends and subscribe.